So here we are. This is a number one contenders match. How the hell did I get here? I don't rightly know. I will I, say I know. I know Anthony, how you got here. Because Anthony you, you are a I, the, my black screen aside, you are a great player. You have shown you're a great player numerous times. You know what you need to do. You you're five and zero. Oh. Like you're five and zero. Oh, so clearly you have skills. I am in a car driving to a playoff basketball game, and I wanted to make sure I was at least here for a little bit because I believe in you. Fun DNC believes in you. You need to believe in yourself. You are playing a fantastic player in Joseph. He's great. He knows a ton, but so do you. And I absolutely believe you deserve to be here and you will do fantastic today. I want to just add on to that, even though I know that would usually be a good capper. Um, I always used to watch Full Metal and I always would think I would like to play in this, but I don't think I'm anywhere good enough and had that imposter syndrome. And I won a couple of matches and I still felt that way. It wasn't really until uh, getting on the road to the title that I felt like I belonged. Uh, so I, I just, you know, this would be the second of three straight potential club dread people that I have to beat in order to get a title. Uh, obviously that's stacked against me a little bit, but I just want to let everybody know that, you know, Joseph, win or lose, I respect you immensely. Uh, but I'm here. I have declared myself. I'm ready to go. Let's do this. All right. Joseph, my man. Um, yeah, Robert was saying, uh, you know, he had to beat a few club drive members to get here, which he has. Uh, but fortunately, that will end tonight. He's hit the wall of, of computing technology that we call Joseph Olivas. How are you feeling about this one? Uh, I'm very nervous about this, just as, I w- as much as I was last time against David. But somehow I got lucky enough to pull the victory over... David, and now I have to play against Robert, who's beaten Kirk and Ryan, and that's intimidating enough, but he seems to also have a uh, this sort of magic that makes Club Dread members not able to answer round three questions, so I just hope to at least answer one. If I answer at least will. one right... You will. You're going to answer that'll three. Be... Don't worry. Don't stop that. Okay. We got this, man. Don't worry. No nerves. Yeah, good good luck, Robert. We'll, yeah, good we'll luck. see what happens. That's a lot but Robert and Anthony. Uh, I like that yeah. those guys a lot. So what is up, everybody? We are back with another episode of Full Metal Singles. I'm your host for tonight's match, Scott the Esquire Harvey. And look, Anthony may have a, a big playoff basketball game, but we have a big uh, playoff trivia match tonight. Um, in fact, it is a number one contender match. Winner moving on to the title match to face the current full medal singles champion, Brian Michaels. Uh, and tonight we have going up uh, for that, for potentially that honor of facing Brian, former champion, Joseph Olivas, trying to get back and, and uh, instigate another wild stallion civil war against uh, the rookie, uh, Robert Kastner, he's come in, he's won five straight matches. Uh, you know, he asks, how, how, uh, how did he get here? When in five straight matches will usually, usually get you here. Um, so I'm looking forward to a great match tonight on the desk with me. The, the head of full metal geek RJ's here. RJ, how are you feeling about this match? Um, it's always nice to see number one contender matches. Number one contender matches are what like drives this business. I mean, come on. These these are what these are what we come for. Number one contenders lead to championships. That's what we want. We want to see championship matches. We want to see people play for that title. Um, may I just say you sound fantastic tonight. Like you literally sound like a sports announcer. I'm so jealous <laughs> of your voice. Very happy to be sharing the desk with you. Well, thank you very much. I have often been told that I have a face for radio. So um, unfortunately, I have to show off my real face here, too. But um, enough about that. I think we can go ahead and get our competitors in here uh, for this number one contender match. So introducing first with a record of five wins and zero defeats representing fun DMC. It is Robert, the ghost Kastner. Scott, you're a beautiful man. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you, man. I just love the compliments that are going on here so far. Um, Introducing second with a record of eight wins, two defeats. He is the former Full Metal Singles and current Full Metal Teams champion representing Club Dread, Joseph the Algorithm Olivas. 
All right, gentlemen, your first round is the traditional whiteboard round. You're going to get eight questions from eight different categories. For each question, you'll have 15 seconds to write down an answer on your whiteboard. After time is up, uh, we'll ask you to show and say what you wrote. One point for each correct answer. And, of course, if you get all eight questions correct, uh, then you will receive a bonus question for a perfect round. Um, with all that being said, uh, Robert, are you ready? Indeed. Joseph, are you ready? Yes, again, good luck, Robert. Good luck to you, sir. Thank you. Then let's get into the match with your first question, which is going to come tonight in the category of fantasy sci-fi. What is the name of the planet where the majority of the film's action takes place in 1984's Dune? So are we not going to talk about how like everyone was saying nice things about Scott and Joseph just comes on screen and goes... I don't know. That was kind of rude. I'm just saying. He's a man of fear. Look, we're, we're we're faction mates. We uh we have an unspoken bond. He doesn't he doesn't need to to butter me up. You know what? Fair enough. Fair enough. And I forgot to do a timer, which I will do in the next question. But five, four, three, two, one. Let's go to Robert. Uh, I haven't watched this movie, but I'm reading the book currently. Arrakis. And Joseph. No blank boards. Dune. Arrakis is correct. So Robert takes the early lead. RJ, do you actually want to get the uh, the timer ready if you don't mind? Oh, and we have... Uh, looks like Ethan wants to be brought in for a challenge, so we can have some time to get the Yes, uh, early early day challenge, possibly. I just want to bring this up to Joseph. Um, I've read the book and seen the movie. I don't remember exactly in the movie, but it's also known as Dune informally. Like, that's a nickname they call the planet. They call it Arrakis and Dune, which is why the book is called Dune. So if you'd like to throw the challenge on this one, I think we have a solid chance, but it's really early. So if you don't want to, I understand. It's one question, too. So up to you. Yeah, I was wondering if, like, Dune, that's got to be... The planet is also sometimes known as Dune. So it's, you know, it's up to you. I mean... Yeah, I'll I'll ch I'll challenge that there, that Dune is also an acceptable answer. All right, we have a, a challenge on the the floor, so we're going to take this under advisement, and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back from that challenge. Um, we consulted the script for 1984's Dune, uh, and we have determined that uh, on multiple occasions in the script, uh, the characters do actually refer to the planet interchangeably as both Arrakis and Dune. Uh, so for that reason, we've decided that we will be accepting both answers, um, which means that we have a tie game after, uh, after the first question. RJ, would you like to hit them with question number two? Absolutely. All right, gentlemen, your second question is going to come from the category of crime. Who plays Mayor Carmine Polito in the 2013 crime comedy American Hustle? This movie was a disappointment, in my opinion, when it came out. I think that's why I never went to go see it when it came out in theaters, because a lot of people were, like, disappointed in it. So I was like, eh, Five, I'll wait till it's free four, to watch it. Three, two, one. Uh, let's go to Joseph. Jeremy Renner. And Robert. I was so happy to have that lead for a second. Jeremy Renner. <laughs> that is correct. Uh, both, both correct. It is Jeremy Renner. Okay, we'll move on now to your third question, guys, which comes in the category of drama. Michael Fassbender and Alicia Vikander star together in what 2016 drama about a lighthouse keeper and his wife who rescue and adopt a child lost at sea? Yo, I can say one thing uh, without giving it away. The trailers for this were beautiful. I remember that much. Yeah, I don't remember much about this movie, to be honest with you. That's all I remember. Four, <laughs> two. One. Alicia Vikander is very good in the green nut out now, though. Uh, let's go to Robert. The light between oceans? And Joseph. I'm so worried about the inclusion of the, the light between oceans. Both correct. It is the light between oceans. Got that in just in time. All right, gentlemen, also, your next Machina. question is going to come in the category of animation. In Minions... What does Bob do that accidentally makes him king of England? Uh, 
five, four, three, two, one. Uh, let's go to Joseph. I don't remember. He saves the queen. And Robert? Said he steals the crown. Both incorrect. The answer we were looking for is that he pulls out the sword and the stone. Oh, that's right. I remember that. Other classic thing that people do in medieval stuff. Yep. Um, all right. Uh, so no perfect rounds tonight, uh, but we ha do have a few more questions in round one. Your next question comes in the category of scores and soundtracks. John Williams wrote the song Somewhere in My Memory for what 90s film? Not going to lie, I read this question, had no idea. Absolutely none. Completely went over You don't really think that. You don't think of John Williams really as doing songs, more pieces. Five, right? Four, three, two, one. Pens down. Let's go to Robert. I don't know. Schindler's List. And Joseph. I want a different Spielberg movie, Hook. Both incorrect. The correct answer is Home Alone. Oh, ah. damn it. I, I did hear that once. Sorry. I had the right first two letters. You did. All right, still a tie game as we get into question number six. Gentlemen, this is going to be in the category of non-U.S. films. In Grave of the Fireflies, how do both siblings die? I haven't watched this one. I've heard it's quite depressing, so you have to be in That the is actually it. why I refuse to watch it. I'm just like, I'm not ready for that. Five, I, I, I'm not ready to put four, myself through that. Three, two... One, pens down. Uh, let's go to Joseph. Beautiful film, though. Starvation. And Robert. And now I said car accident. Joseph strikes first blood. The correct answer is starvation. And we will now get into your penultimate question of the round, which comes in the category of comic book movies. In Daredevil, at what location does Daredevil fight and defeat Bullseye? Better character, Bullseye the Daredevil villain or Bullseye the horse from Toy Story? Say it. I like this movie. I like Daredevil. It's been a, it's been a long time, but I did like the scene where they kiss in the rain. Five, four. That was three, always really nice. Two, one. Uh, let's go to Robert. Can Bullseye the horse kill an old woman with a peanut? Church. And Joseph. Can Bullseye the horse say a lot more than Bullseye? In Daredevil Church. <laughs> Asking the important questions. Uh, both correct. Uh... All right. That brings us to your final question since there are no perfect rounds. And, of course, it's going to come in the category of plot summary. Name the 90s film from the plot summary. A bridge engineer and an experienced old hunter begin a hunt for two lions after they start attacking local construction workers. I like that I knew this. I actually knew the answer to this. Yeah, I, I mean, look, if even if you don't know the movie, I feel like that plot summary would really sell you on it. Five, four, three, two, one. Pins down, and we go to Joseph. Robert and the Darkness. I mean, the ghost and the darkness. <laughs> uh, and Robert. Damn it. I said the ghost in the darkness. We can't accept that. Uh, Joseph is correct. It is the ghost and the darkness. Um, so at the end of round one that we see Joseph going up to a two point lead there, he's up six to four. Um, and that brings us to the end of round one. We are now going to move into round two. RJ, would you like to read the rules for round two while we get the wheel up? Absolutely. And I'm actually going to read them because I don't know how you do your thing. So let me just get these on real quick because I actually kind of need these sometimes. All right, here we go. Ra round two rules. The leading competitor will decide to go first or second. The player going first will bet on either red or black. The wheel will be spun and will land on either a category or a color. If a color is spun, the competitor with the corresponding color will choose a category for themselves or their opponent. If a category is spun, the competitor can choose to take it or respin. If they respin, they will have to stick with whatever category the wheel lands on. From the category, the competitor will receive four questions worth two points each. Multiple choice is available, reducing the point value to one point. Opponents can steal the points available if the question is answered incorrectly. 
beautiful job. Uh, I, I know the glasses really helped there. Uh, your categories on the wheel tonight. Well, we're having some technical difficulties, but um, we will read you the categories first on the wheel tonight. We have biopics, two thousands, Emily Blunt, classics, erotic thrillers, Steven Spielberg, family films. Don't you know that's film set in Minnesota? Uh, Robert Strength of DC Comic Adaptations and Joseph Strength's Strength of 20th Century Director Filmography, as well as, of course, Red and Black. Joseph, you are in the lead, which means you get to pick whether you go first or second. Uh, what would you like to do? I would. I think we should go second, Joseph. How do you feel about that? I agree. Second, please. Okay. Okay, and Robert, red or black? Black. All right, I was about to have to go fish out my wheel from the closet from my days of hosting Wheel of Fortune, but um, fortunately we got the virtual wheel up and running. Um, and I believe that, uh, Joseph, you did say you wanted to go second, right? Yes, please. Okay, so we will have Robert spin. Malcolm, if you want to give that wheel a spin. Um, is Robert red or black? I'm black. He's black. black. Uh, the wheel is frozen. Oh, there we go. It lands on Steven Spielberg. Would you like to keep it or spin again? What do you think? Yes. Uh, it's not terrible. There's some stuff on this wheel that I feel like you could do better at. There's a couple things maybe we don't want, but th he has a lot of movies. And if you're going director and possibly producer credit, there could be a lot on there. Um, you think how, I, how you I mean, I'm cool with risking it, but it's a risk. You know. It is a risk. Uh, I'm kind of leaving that up to you. There's, I feel like, there's just a lot on Steven Spielberg. How much did you? Are you feel good about it or? Let's spin again. Go for risk? Let's spin, spin it. Again. Yeah, let's risk it. All right. All right. Spinning again, and this is the category you're stuck with. Joseph Strength of 20th That's Century better. Director Filmography. Great. All right. Hey, just relax. Take your time. If you know it, go. You go to multiple choice. I might not be here after this. I got to leave, but everything, you're great. You've done everything you need to do. Just do your best in this round. Do your best in round three. You're good. All right, man? Thanks, man. Yep. All right. Uh, RJ, since uh, Joseph is my faction mate, I will uh, go ahead and administer Robert's questions if that works for you. Okay. Okay, Robert. Uh, your first question in the category of 20th century director filmography. Yep. Who directed Somebody Up There Likes Me, The Sand Pebbles, and The Andromeda Strain? Think of this. Five. Multiple choice. Four, three. All right. Your multiple choice options are A, Don Siegel, B, Otto Preminger, C, Robert Wise, or D, John Sturgis? Can I hear the options one more time, please? Yep, you get one free one. Uh, A, Don Siegel, B, Otto Preminger, C, Robert Wise, or D, John Sturgis? A. A is incorrect. We go to Joseph for the one-point steal. Robert Wise. Robert Wise is correct for the steal. This is going wonderful. All right, so Joseph goes up uh, by another point there. Uh, your second question, Robert. Who directed Dying Young, The Client, and Flawless? Multiple choice. All right, your multiple choice options are A, Barry Levinson, B, Joel Schumacher, C, Andrew Davis, D, John Frankenheimer. Can I get a, I'm going to use a repeat. Can I get a full repeat, please? Yes, that, that is your first one, I believe. Uh, who directed Dying Young, The Client, and Flawless? And your multiple choice options, A, Barry Levinson, B, Joel Schumacher, C, Andrew Davis, or D, John Frankenheimer? I'm an idiot. Joel Schumacher. That is correct for one point. All right, Robert, your third question in 20th Century Director Filmography. 
who directed The Yakuza, The Electric Horseman, and Absence of Malice? Five, four. Multiple choice. All right, your multiple choice options. A, Paul Schrader. B, Sidney Pollack. C, Sidney Lumet. D, Robert Benton. Robert Benton. That is incorrect. We go to Joseph for the one point steal. Joseph, again, your choices are A, Paul Schrader, B, Sidney Pollack, C, Sidney Lumet, or D, Robert Benton. Is it Sidney Pollack? That is correct for, for the one point steal. All right, Robert, that brings us to your final question in the category of 20th century director filmography. Who directed California Split? Three Women, and Vincent and Theo. Multiple choice. Okay, your multiple choice options are A, John Huston, B, Herbert Ross, C, Robert Altman, D, Norman Jewison. Robert Altman. And that is correct for one point. Great. Okay, so at the end of Robert's round two, I have Joseph in the lead, eight to six. Uh, and we go on to Joseph's spin now, so let's bring in Ethan and the wheel. Joseph, your first spin, and it lands on Robert's Color of Black. Uh, I don't know if Anthony's still with us, but if you want to bring him in. If he's here, I would, I would like to. He is not. Son of a bitch. <laughs> Sad. Okay. Uh, Robert, Robert, I can uh, consult with you if you want. <laughs> uh, what would you? What category would you like to give Joseph? DC. All right, both strengths getting played tonight. Um, he has given uh, Joseph DC comic adaptations, uh, and we're going to let the the head of Full Metal Geek ask the geek questions. Uh, so once Ethan gets that? dropped out, there we go. Mm -hmm. Uh, RJ, do you want to ask your, uh, Joseph his round two questions in DC Comics? Sure, absolutely. All right, Joseph, your first question. In the Lego Batman movie, what is the name of the talking brick that is the gatekeeper of the Phantom Zone? Multiple choice, please. Your multiple choice options are A, Edith, B, Phyllis, C, Gretchen, D, Susan. Five. Four. B as in boy. B as in boy. Phyllis is correct for one point. Your next question. The stalls live in what U.S. state in a history of violence? Five. Multiple choice, please. Four. Your multiple choice options are A, Indiana, B, Ohio, C, Illinois, or D, Missouri. Five, four, three. D two. as in dog. Robert, that is a chance for a one point steal. Your options once again are A, Indiana, B, Ohio, C, Illinois, or D, Missouri. Ohio. That is also incorrect. We were looking for Indiana. <laughs> Maybe All my right, third Joseph. or fourth pick, so at least I'm not upset. All right, Joseph, back to you for your third question. Which actor who has also betrayed a Bond villain 
plays antagonist Anton Arcane in both 1982's Swamp Thing and its sequel, The Return of Swamp Thing. Multiple choice, please. Five, four. Your multiple choice three, options are two. A. Oh. Just got... I don't know why I'm still counting. Sorry. Oh, okay, sorry. Sorry about that. All right. Your multiple choice options are A. Julian Glover, B. Christopher Lee, C. Jonathan Price, or D. Louis Jordan. Five. Four, three. Louis three. Jordan. That is correct for one point. I'm sorry for mispronouncing. I I, I went with my gut. <laughs> that, that's all right. I think that's how it's pronounced anyway. We'll see. Well, we're, you got it right anyway, so we're good. All right, your last question. In V for Vendetta, what is the name of the secret facility where V was in prison and experimented on 20 years before the events of the film? I studied this in college, so so I think I should remember. Five, Dang it. Four, three. Multiple choice, please. Two. Your multiple choice options are A, Green Hill, B, Lark Hill, C, Buck Hill, or D, Oak Hill. Five, four. Three, two, Green Hill. One. Robert, chance at a big one point steal. Your options once again are A, Green Hill, B, Lark Hill, C, Buck Hill, or D, Oak Hill. It's Lark Hill. My other That's guess. correct for the one point steal. All right, big swing there to end round two. Uh, I have going into round three, Joseph still in the lead with uh, 10 points to Robert's seven. Uh, so still a close one. As we get into round number three, uh, I'll read the rules for round number three. Uh, you have your you will have your list of movies that you've received beforehand uh, as Malcolm brings up the round three wheel. Uh, your first question will be worth two points. Uh, your next two questions will be worth four points. No multiple choice, no stealing. Uh, we're going to spin the wheel to determine uh, from which movie each question will come from. You do get one respin, uh, but only one throughout round three. Um, you, you can get a technical respin if uh, if we're out of questions on a particular movie, but you'll you can only choose to respin one time. Um, and then of course, you know, we will start with Roberts and C Trails, and once he either ties or takes the lead, we will go over to Joseph. Um, and we will keep going until someone has been mathematically eliminated. Uh, your round three movies for tonight's match are Magic Mike, the SpongeBob SquarePants movie, So I Married an Axe Murderer. A Night in Casablanca, Irma LaDuce, Harakiri, The Terminator, and The Cabin in the Woods. Uh, Robert, you are trailing by three points, so we are going to go to your spin first to determine which maybe your two-point question will come from. Mm -hmm. The suspense is killing me. And it lands on a night in Casablanca. Uh, would you like to keep that or spin again? I'll keep it. Okay, and uh, RJ, once again, I'll ask uh, Robert his questions if that works for you. All right, Robert, your two-point question in A Night in Casablanca Mm -hmm. Who plays Lieutenant Delmar? Charles Drake. And that is correct for two points. It's weird. That was the one I absolutely thought you were going to ask before you asked it. Well, there you go. Credit to uh, Jake or whoever else wrote this question. You're in their head. Um, okay. So Robert is still trailing. It is 10 to 9. So we're going to bring back the wheel and spin for Robert's first four-pointer. Wheels are unkind. 
Yeah, they really are. All right. There we go. Oh, oh, it's moving. The wheel likes Groucho tonight. It lands on a night in Casablanca again. Uh, Robert, would you like to keep it or spin again? Yeah, I'll keep it. It's fine. All right. A movie I've seen twice because thanks trivia. Um, your first four point question Same. in a night in Casablanca. What is the name of the street that Beatrice tells Cornblow to meet her at? where he would be run over by a car. Rue Lafayette. What do you think, RJ? I've got, I, I think I'm going to accept it. Uh, I, well, okay. So if, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what is in the doc. The, the answer in the doc is Rue de Lafayette. It does say we can accept Lafayette. Um, so he his answer was Rue Lafayette. I'm inclined to accept it, but um I, I am inclined as if if we're saying we would just accept Lafayette, he still had Lafayette in his answer. So I'm pretty sure and I don't know this, so don't quote me. I, I'm pretty sure they say Rue Lafayette in the movie, but I think so too. Yes. So whatever. Okay. It doesn't sound like we have any challenges then. So um Robert, you are correct for four points. Thank you. Um so Robert takes the lead, 13 to 10, um, and we will throw it over to Joseph for his two-pointer. Uh, we can get the wheel back up. Yes, yes, indubitably. Yeah, I didn't think there would be any challenge. I just wanted to tread carefully based on No, yeah, I 100% agree with you. That's why I was... Let's Lands on the piece. Terminator. All right. RJ, would you like to ask jo yes, Joseph, Joseph his two-pointer in the Terminator? Absolutely. All right. As I get to it, all right, Joseph, your first question for two pointers to come within one of Robert for two points. Who plays Officer Vukovic? Lance Henriksen. That's correct for two points. Because I couldn't catch up to him, that's why I did not want to use the respin. All right, Joseph is correct. He still trails by one point, so uh, he will get his next one now. Lands on Irma LaDuce. How are you feeling? So I studied this. I saw it. I just didn't go over it as often as the others. So, I mean, if you watch it and study it, it's pretty good. But, I mean, if you feel better about all the others, maybe respin it anyway. Um, you know? Uh, yeah. My thing is that it's the longest of the movies. And in my last match, when I tried to watch the longest of the movies somewhat recently towards the game, I still didn't get it. My concern is that right, it's if you so feel, long. If you so feel long. better about all the other ones, then maybe let's respin it anyway, because, you know, if, if all of the other ones are better, then I think just respin it. Yeah, I, 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 I'll, I'll use my respin now. All right, typically analytical thinking from the algorithm. Uh, here is your spin, and the movie you are stuck with is Cabin in the Woods. Okay. All right, Joseph, to retake the lead for four points in the cabin in the woods. Kurt picks up what object in the basement? It's like a puzzle ball. We have that as incorrect. We have conch shell. Correct answer can I bring is in, can, shell. Can I bring in Ethan, please? Yeah. Okay. Bring right. in Ethan if you'd like. Ethan, doesn't Marty pick up the conch shell? Uh, to, I'm going to be totally honest. I don't remember, but I, you know, we're late in the game. I trust your gut. Uh, if you think that, then I would go with it. And if not, you know, you only have one more question after this anyway. So I want to challenge that that Marty is the one who picks up the conch shell. I think Kurt picks up the puzzle ball. Okay. 
All right, so we have that challenge on the table, and we'll right. be right back. All right. After uh, a bit of a discussion, uh, we did look, take a look at the scene. Um, it does appear that Kurt does pick up a puzzle ball as well. We could not find that Marty picks up the conch shell. Um, so because there's just a little bit some confusion about whether the challenge was um, correct or the answer was correct, um, we've decided to throw out the question and ask a new question, um, which RJ will do now also in Cabin in the Woods. Yes. All right. Joseph. Your second attempt at a four-point question. What monster do Dana and Marty first see when going down the elevator? Werewolf. That is correct for four points and the lead. Okay, that puts Joseph up 16 to 13. We are now in a position where Robert must hit his final four pointer or Joseph will win the match. And you do still have your respin, Robert. Thank you. Any day now. Lands on Irma Laduce. I'm going to respin just because I want to. <laughs> I, Fair enough. I, I know this movie pretty well, but I just want to do it just because I want to see what happens. And the movie you're stuck with is. Herma LaDuce. There you go. So fate decided. It's fine. <laughs> All right. Let me just scroll up to that. In so we're 100% document. sure it's spun, right? <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> Yeah, it's it fun. did. I, I saying, believe it's fun. If okay, Joseph I'm just I'm we saying saw it for Robert's, Okay, y'all did. I could not tell. Okay. Okay, Robert, your four point question. You must hit this to stay in the match yes. in Irma LaDuce. When Irma has Lord X lie down so she can get his mind right, name both places she tells him to imagine he is in. Tahiti and Baghdad. Wastes no time, and that's because he is correct for four points. Jesus. <laughs> Trust me. If you spent as much time as I did watching that movie, you better know stuff like that. All right. This is what you pay for, folks. This is almost certainly better than Anthony's playoff <sighs> basketball game that's going Indeed. on right now. Uh, we come to the final question. Joseph, uh, you do not have your respin, so you'll be stuck with whatever movie this lands on. I'm hoping spinning... Landing on Irma Laduce now doesn't give me Irma Laduce. <laughs> All right. Lands on the okay. Terminator. <sighs> Got the show. Seth. And Scott, just for my clarification, does that mean I ask him the second one? Second question. Yeah. Just making sure. All right. Joseph, for four points and the win. And you do still have all three of your repeats available to you. Their question. Sarah questions her toughness and ability to be a great litter by saying she can't even do what? Balance her checkbook. And your winner, moving on to the title match, Joseph, the algorithm, all of us. No hesitation on those last two questions. Uh, those guys really watched the movies, but that was a fantastic match. Um, we are going to go into our post match now, and we'll start uh, with our unfortunate second place finisher, uh, Robert. As soon as Joseph drops out, Robert, you played a great match. Uh, round two was just a little bit difficult. You hit your opponent's strength. That's always tough, um, even when it's something general like director filmography. How do you feel um, about your performance overall in this match and on this whole run? Uh, well, I mean, on the run, you can't take the five and one away from me. Uh, I played this match strategy wise terribly. I should have got Ghost in the Darkness and I should have just used a repeat, but I didn't. I should have kept Spielberg and thought I had to risk it. Uh, and I, you know, that happened. But I guess, you know, if I do that, then Joseph gets his strength. So maybe it's worse. Who knows? And then right there at the end, I should have just taken Irma LaDuce because if it's fun, it's Irma LaDuce. And he he was concerned about it. So I played this match strategy wise terribly, except for the giving him DC thing, because uh, that seemed to work out. 
Uh, I mean, I figured this would go down to the wire. It did. Um, this is exactly what I thought would happen against Kurt. I was lucky there. Not so lucky this time. You always have those what if mo moments and matches. Believe me, Marvel's made a whole series called What If Now. Um, but uh, Robert, uh, obviously you're going to be uh, coming back and, and playing some more in full metal with a record like five and one. Anyone you want to face when we get back into regular season play? Uh, I like to play some of the people who I didn't get a chance to play who were on the other side of the bracket. Um, my faction mates, it would be fun, David and Payson. Uh, Menchaca, I'd like to play Menchaca. Uh, that would be fun. Uh, just people who I didn't get to see because they just happened to be on the other side of this um, premeditated version of a bracket. All right. Well, we look forward to those matches when you come back. And again, congratulations on a great run. Five and zero is nothing to sniff at, and losing to to a player of Joseph's quality is certainly nothing to sniff at either, especially on the last question. So we'll look forward to seeing you back. Mm -hmm. um, we will now bring in our winner for tonight's match and his manager, Joseph. Uh, you did it. You're back in the title match uh, against your partner, Brian. Uh, before we talk about that, how do you feel about the way that this match went? Obviously very close. So I actually have a confession to make. I did not watch, re watch all the movies on this list. The only movie that I did not watch was The Terminator because I had already seen it and I already had notes on it. So that was the, like, in terms of, uh, in terms of what movies appeared on my last list against David, that list was like terrifying for me because I had no notes on any of them. But this one, I was like, just one movie that I already know very, very well. I'm like, so thankful that I don't have to spend as much as that much time on on all the movies, which turned out to not be as great because I had to still watch Irma Deuce. But anyway, yeah, that was the one movie that I was like, thank you, thank you. I already have big, big notes for this movie, so that was that was a huge relief for me to get that as the last as the last question. But uh, again, Robert once again shows he's incredible in this in this game. It sucks to have those kind of like mistakes and like me. I kind of wish that I didn't say use Marty in the Kong shell maybe or have no issues with the challenge or things like that. But like either way, like he's still an incredible competitor, and uh, I'll be looking forward to play Brian again. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm I'm pumped about this one. Uh, yeah, Robert. I mean, like you said, he played great. Like Robert's incredible. I think that on a, a, you know any other day, like this would have been you know could have gone either way. Um, but uh, I, I am happy that in round two it went the way it did because Robert got to give Joseph his strength and Rob and Joseph gave Robert his strength in a way. Not you know he didn't choose it, but um, so either way they both had to answer their opponent's strengths. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm just pumped to see uh, Watson versus Jennings too. This is a uh, this is gonna be a fun one. I'm excited for it. <laughs> Always down for a good Jeopardy reference. Uh, yeah, Joseph, your thoughts on uh, on the title match, of course. Is it going to kind of be a fun match since you're playing against your partner, or do you really want to get that belt that he took from you back? It'll be a fun match. Like, it's no – it's a lot – it's a lot of pressure, obviously, playing another title match. But, like, <clears throat> win or lose, the, the belt is staying in Club Dread for full medal. So I don't have as much – nerves i guess when i play against somebody else like robert or david because well we well, want to keep it in the we want to keep it in the faction so absolutely well thank you guys and congratulations again joseph we'll look forward to seeing you back in the title match uh, all right well that will uh wrap up this match and that will wrap up the road to the title next we have the title match uh RJ, how do you feel about this match and looking for, ahead to Joseph versus Brian once again? I mean, that was a hell of a number one contenders match. You know, you could tell by Robert's face, you know, with, with the deficit he had coming out of round one and the spun he got in round two for both of them to get opponent's choice and to go all the way to all three questions in the round. That was a great match. Like you said, that's, that's what we're here for. And yeah, I mean, you know, they're the team champs. Why not watch them go at each other again? It, it, it's going to happen for a few times. And, you know, 
it's it's always going to be fun to watch two of the best go at it, regardless of how they feel about each other. In this case, they're best friends, so at least, you know, it's fun. Yeah, and round three, always huge. Again, it proves that in this match. Uh, today, you have to watch your movies, although apparently you don't if you're Joseph Olivas. Apparently, you could just uh, get a walk-off win on a movie that you didn't even rewatch. But, Completely winged. Um, some, pe- some people are just built different. But anyway, um, yeah, another fa- a fantastic match, and we'll look forward to that title match between Joseph and Brian. That'll do it for this episode of Full Metal Singles. Uh, don't forget to follow, subscribe, Full Metal, everything uh, that you do here on YouTube. Uh, for RJ, I've been... Uh, Scott, the Esquire, Harvey, and we will see you next time for Full Metal Trivia.